Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Webcomic Wednesday. Today, we are going to be discussing the comic Fangs, which is by Sarah Anderson. So, I'm just going to dive right in and get started. I think this might actually be episode 10 of this series. So that's exciting, if I've gotten the numbers right for once in my existence. So, to discuss the premise a little bit more, Fangs follows a vamp whose name is Elsie, I think, if I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know, I had to look at the word a couple times, but you, you know me at character names by this point. It's a struggle. But yeah, follows Elsie, who is a vampire, and Jimmy, who is a werewolf, and they meet at a bar, and they're kind of these little one-shots of their relationships. Uh, this is a completed comic, so it is finished, and I read it on tapas, but as always, I will leave the notes down below, and it's actually been published into a very, very pretty book. So if that's something you want to check out too, I'll try and link that below as well. Yeah, so to give you a little bit more of the plot, because I feel like that was a very short premise. So it follows the two of them as they meet as a bar, they both obviously tell each other like, hey, I'm a vampire, and hey, I'm a werewolf. And then it just kind of goes through almost a mundane look at what it would be like to be a vampire or werewolf in the 21st century which is kind of interesting so it's kind of their relationships develops living together what their eating habits are like how they kind of manage full moons or not being able to be in sunlight and how all of those things come together so the two characters we have elsie who's kind of this well she's very goth kind of punk rock which kind of fits the whole vampire aesthetic but also the thing that i really love is there's this kind of joking lightheartedness to like some of the terror that she's caused throughout the years. One of the earliest scenes of the comic is just like her staring at a notebook trying to decide like should I eat this man or should I date him? You know? Those are things that she like just doesn't really get and she has this book where she keeps track of her victims and things like that. So she's very much like a vegan vampire because she gets blood from blood blanks but there's also this like darkness inside of her where she's like I was once the most feared thing in the world and now I just wander around and I don't cause havoc and there's that tiny part of her that just wants to cause chaos all the time. Jimmy on the other hand is just a human dog <laughs> which makes sense and I actually kind of appreciate it. I always find it funny, I've seen stuff about this online where people are like what if instead of a werewolf being like horrifying, they're just like an oversized puppy? And that's essentially the approach that Sarah Anderson takes to this comic here. It's adorable. It's very funny to see like some of those dog-like tendencies come out in him. So that will be things like he's very suspicious of the mailman or squirrels or things like that that kind of throw him off. And I think to transition into what I love about this comic, I think that's one of the things that I really love about this comic is it's very witty in the way that it um, addresses monsters and kind of looking at them in a more like mundane or subdued way and instead twisting these things that have been made to be like terrifying and being like, okay, what if this was just like a very chill thing that wasn't really a big deal that people had to live with? Another thing about this comic that's kind of interesting is the fact that they're more like little one-shots. There's not like a huge character development narrative arc or anything like that, but because of that it makes for like very easy, very light, quick reading that you can just kind of scroll through quickly and get everything done. And I think that's one of the like perks of Sarah Anderson or one of the things that she does really well is even in her Sarah Scribble series she just has this way of seeing things in like a new light and being able to put a different spin or twist on them that you're like that makes sense but I never would have addressed it that way so it kind of forces you to reimagine these creatures and also kind of recreate a narrative of like what's a monster and what's not if I haven't talked about it yet on this channel I'm obsessed with the idea of like monsters because to me like monsters are something we create right they're not like they're not actual things they're something that we've built up in our heads over time and they exist because of our culture there's this really interesting um piece called monster thesis by um i think cohen is the author's last name where he talks about like the ways that monsters function in society essentially to create fear 
and I think it's really interesting how modern narratives and modern forms of narratives such as webcomics have allowed us the opportunity to reclaim those creatures and kind of rewrite their stories in like a positive and creative way. Something else that I'll just touch on quickly is the art style. Sarah Anderson, I think I talked about this in Cheshire Crossing because she does the art for that as well, but the diversity and skill of her art style is incredible. Like if you look at something from, I'll like flash images up, so something from Cheshire Crossing, and then one of the Sarah Scribbles comics, and then something from this comic, they're all like incredibly different in some ways, like there's definitely pieces of her style that you can pull out of all three, but it also just shows how unique and dynamic she is as an artist to be able to adapt to the story and then have the medium or the way that the characters are drawn reflect what the narrative is telling and that's something that I think is very important in webcomics is to make sure that the visual medium is working as a like a translation of what's written because they very much like are cohesive right you can't have one without the other it wouldn't be the same story and I think that's something that she does a really good job of in this series. So yeah, another short one this week. I think next week I'm going to cover one of my favorite webcomics, so I think that's going to be a long one because I probably won't be able to stop myself from rambling, but I do also have a bunch of other content filmed for you guys that will be coming out shortly, and I think in the next couple days I'll have my March reading wrap-up coming out to you as well as my April bullet journal planning video. So keep an eye out for those and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell to get notifications. Otherwise, if you're just here for these videos, there'll be another webcomic Wednesday next week, and my Goodreads and art Instagram is linked down below, as always, if you'd like to follow me there. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.